everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is card number 14 and the last card of this year's creative card series. So <laughs> I wasn't sure at the beginning how many I was going to make. I did kind of think, oh, I'll do seven and do that back to back for a week. But then I just, I don't know, I kind of had a bit of a flow and I thought, no, I'm going to do some more. So I've done 14 tutorials, but I'd say half of them, there's two cards in each. So yeah, I've um, <laughs> I've done a lot of cards and you've really been enjoying them. The comments and everything's just been really, really nice. So thank you. And I hope that you enjoy this last one that I've got to share. This doesn't mean that I'm not doing any more cards, by the way. This is just my creative card series for anybody that's new. It's just a real focus on card folds for two weeks. So um, yeah, all normal tutorials will resume next week. So three a week plus one on a Sunday sometimes. Anyway, so today the inspiration for this one has come from a template I actually saw on Pinterest and it's called a double display card. Now the lady that made this was Susan Blue Robot and her tutorial is from 2009, but it's, well, it's not a tutorial, it's nothing online, it was a template, but I've doubled hers. So this is what I've come up with and there are similar around but this is the, the style that I've gone for. So I've made this envelope and I'm going to show you how to make an envelope just that little bit more bouncy so that it will fit something bulky and so you don't always have to make a box so wait till the end for that because I'll be showing you that as well but it's really cute and I'll show you all the papers. So this is how it looks when you take it out of the envelope. Now the belly band is optional but I do like it so just slide off the belly band and then you have this and it's pretty big. This is a mantelpiece card. This will look great displayed above the fireplace. Now you see it's got lots of shine with that Dovecraft silver mirrored cardstock. And then I've used some really fun kind of um, stamps here at the, I'll show you those in a minute, but I'll show you those in a moment, but I've got nothing that says happy birthday, like a piece of folded card. I think that's awesome. In the middle is an old stamping up one that says just for you on your special day. And then here it says, are you celebrating 29 again? And I just think it looks brilliant. I love the way it all closes up. But, and then on the back, you have room to write your message. And of course, you can decorate this even more. You could add photos on this. There is so much scope to you know, really personalize this card. And then it stands up like this. So you can have it quite spread out. Once you obviously play around with it, there we go. Or you can have it kind of like that. It's entirely up to you. I just adore it. So yeah, it was I've I've adapted a few bits and pieces and I've changed some score lines, but the the main idea, yeah. So this is known as a double display card. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so the papers I'm using are these here. It's from the Making Memories 12 by 12 paper pack. All the beautiful collection of papers. Absolutely love that one. Again, everything will be linked in my blog. And then I've got everything here. So I am not going to decorate this one. I'm going to do all the mats and layers, but in terms of like the stamping and stuff, I'm not going to do that on this one because I want to leave it blank until I know who I'm going to give it to. Or it might be that someone requests me to customize something a bit further and I could probably hopefully do that with this. So yes, I'm going to show you everything you need, but the rest like decoration will be down to you. So these are the, some of the stamps. So the happy birthday on the belly band, which is this gorgeous one here is, a, is an old Dovecraft, but it's still floating around. So I should be able to find it. Um, sorry, that's that one there, birthday girl. Yeah, I didn't end up using that one in the end. I think I was going to, that was it. So yeah, I've just used the birthday girl there, which is really nice. These are the ones here for the inside. So I use the R, you celebrate in 29 again, and nothing says happy birthday like a piece of folded card. Woodware clear magic, it's the little things. Again, I will link that. I've also made a template, because I just think it's easy for you to see. So again, I will link that other template for the Susan Blue Robot one just so you can see if you did want to make it smaller, but this is for the double, even though it is called a double, this is like a double double. And then this is what you need for an envelope. So this is a piece of 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Okay, so I'll keep that to one side, we'll go to that later. So to make the actual card base, you want two pieces that are six by 12. Okay, and we're gonna make this. So this is one, and then I've made another one, which is gonna come off this side, and that's how you get that card fold. And then you also want, so two pieces of that size, and then you want two pieces that are four by six. And then you want something for your belly band, so I've just got a bit of scrap left over from when I cut these, and this is 12 by one and a half. And then I've got this oval here, which I've already prepared. I'll tell you the measurements of that a bit more, and you can kind of, you know, see what you've got when we get to it. So first of all, some simple scoring. Um, so along the 12 inch side, you just want to score at two inches 
4 inches, 8 inches and 10 inches and you want to do that on both pieces and then just flip it over and do that again. All right. It's just a bit easier this way if you just do all of them. And what I might do actually is just use my actual stylus just so I can really get in there with those score lines. Just break those fibres up a little bit because you're going to be doing like mountain and valleys or, you know, it's kind of like a bit of a concertina. But there we go. This is very thick. This is the Lidl 270 GSM cardstock. So it's a really nice weight. Um, and that's it. So that's the scoring for a minute. We will do a couple of tiny score lines when we get to that. Okay, so you'll have two of these. Like I said, I've already done this one here. And here is the template. Okay, so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. This is slightly shorter because I've done this on a piece of scrap A4, not the exact 12. It's just slightly shy, but it gives you an idea anyway. So here's your two, four, eight, and 10 score line. You can see them here, two, four, eight, and 10. So this side, you're not gonna do nothing. And you're gonna do this on exactly the same on both pieces, okay? We're just gonna flip one of them at the end, but you don't need to worry about that yet. So you just ignore these two score lines. Everything you're gonna be working on is on these two here on the left-hand side. What you wanna do is from this two inch score lines, you wanna come down one inch, okay? So we'll do that first of all. So I'm gonna bring in my T-square ruler because this is just handy for me to keep a nice straight line because I can hit it against the top there. So I'm going to follow down on that score line here, it's that two inch score line, and with a pencil I'm just going to put a little dot at one, because we can rub all this out at one inch. Okay, then you want to do the same coming up from the bottom. Okay, so again, put a little pencil mark there at one. Okay, so again, do that on the other piece, so everything I'm showing you, you want to do twice. Then we want to just do a little pencil mark within this section here. So between the four and the eight, and we want to mark at six. So you see I've got this black line here. This will eventually become our sc a score line that we do, but this is at six inches. So in the middle of this piece here, this ruler's back to front when you use it this way, but I'm just going to mark the halfway point. So you're just going to mark six inches. If I bring in this ruler here, just so it looks easier for you guys. Six inches here on my ruler, put a pencil mark. And again at the bottom. Now what you want to do is draw a pencil mark down to this mark here. So I'm going to turn this around, pop my ruler at the top here, and I'm just going to, from that mark there, just draw a pencil down to that one. We don't need to do a pencil mark there, we're going to score there, but you just want to bring your pencil mark down to there. And then again I'm going to come along here Keep my ruler nice and straight. If you don't have a T-squared ruler, what I would recommend you do is use your grid underneath. So for example, here's my grid here. I would line my cardstock up into the corner of any squares, it doesn't matter. And then with my ruler, I would keep my ruler in line with one of these here. And that way you know it's nice and straight all the way down here, okay? So now that's what you should have. So I've got this pencil mark one inch down from this two inch score line. It goes across the four inch score line to here, which is the center, which is six inches of the whole piece of cardstock. So what we've just, the two pencil marks we've done are these two red lines here, which are now gonna be cut lines. You wanna do that on both, and now we're gonna cut them. So I'm just gonna bring in my cutting knife. Again, you can do this on your trimmer, if you put it into your trimmer, in fact I do have one but my blades are not very good, but if you have a trimmer, all you want to do is pop it in to the one inch here, if you're using this Fiskars for example, pop it in at one inch, drop this down and line it up at two along here and cut down to six. And then flip this over, pop it in at one and again drop it down and score and cut from two to six. Okay, so that's the easy way to do it if you've got your trimmer. So I do have them, I just haven't got around to replacing the blades because to be honest, unless I'm doing cards like this, I just always use my guillotine. So, but I do love my cutting knife. And the one thing I would say that I prefer using the cutting knife to the trimmer is I can really see what I'm doing. So now I'm just gonna line my ruler up along that pencil line and from that score line all the way down to that pencil mark there. Now I've just cut 
that section. So it's a four inch cut line that you're doing. I'm just going to turn this this way. Again, just line that up. That one looks a bit crooked, so I'm just going to check it on my grid here. So now I'll get rid of that. Rub out any pencil marks on both of your pieces. Even that one at six inches, you don't need that now. Because next, so with both of these pieces that you've done, bring in your scoreboard and you're going to score. So you should have, again, your two inch score line here, your four inch score line, you've got your cut line, cut line. At six inches, just score down to the end of that cut line. It should line up perfectly, which mine does. And then here I've got on my grid, so six inches. like so. If you can see now where I've just scored just down to there. There we go, you can see them all. Okay, so we've just got that score line at six inches down to meet that cut line. That's all you need to do. You need to do that on both pieces. Okay, then we just need to do some folding. So the two inch score line you want to fold, flip it over and you're going to fold that down. Okay, and then you want to bring this out and bring it towards you, pushing that one away from you. Okay. And then bring it right over and then go and burnish all of those. So we've got that. Okay. And then this next score line here, you're going to fold it down. Okay. So do it slow. So you should have this is a mountain these are mountains and this is a mountain. You've only got one valley which is that one there and then this last one will then become your second valley. So you should have two valleys, this one and this one and three mountains, this one, this one and this one. And do that twice so you will now have these two pieces and then all we're simply going to do is just turn that one around and you're going to sit them together like this and then those two pieces of cardstock that I told you about earlier will sit perfectly joining the whole thing up so it looks like one big piece of cardstock. Now it's up to you in terms of decoration whether you want to decorate them separately. I prefer sticking it all together as I am about to now and then you can really kind of see it um, how it's all going to look together. So all you want to do is grab some glue. I'm going to use my Kalau and just cover one of these first. I'm going to sit one over the top Focus on the bottom, get the bottom lined up so then Lisa and the card will stand and not wobble and if you're slightly out on the top you can trim that. So I'm just going to stick one half and then pop this down on the other. And you just want to go up to the score line when it's in its folded form because that way you know it's going to close down. So don't have this really flat and stick it down and go over that score line because it's going to buckle and it won't allow you to fold. So just make sure that you keep it up in that kind of that position like that and then stick everything down. You just get a, a much nicer finish overall. Okay and then flip it over because you'll have this join and then just cover it with the other piece. And You don't have to have them the same colour as me. I did want it to look like it was one big piece so but you could have you know white and anything but my mats that I'm going to be going through with you next and layers my mats are white so and then just stick that one over the top. Okay, so now that will fold down like so, and then these fold in. Again, you might need to just burnish them, and then that one. So they're like the little doors that you then open up to reveal your card. So yeah, there you have it. So I mean, if you sometimes just like to like make lots of blanks, then there you are, you're ready to go. Now we want to add lots of mats and layers. So if anything, that's the time consuming bit, actually doing the that bit is really quick. So here are all my mats. Now for the one that I showed you, this one here, my mats for this one were in silver. You can see just how much they catch the light. It looks wicked. But for this one, I'm gonna do white ones. So again, it's entirely up to you. But what I'm going to do is grab my smaller scoreboard to go through the measurements. So I'm going to go through the measurements for the mats and stick them all down and then I'll do the measurements for the layers because I think otherwise it might get a bit confusing. So you want two pieces of three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And these are going to go here 
and also one on the back for you to write your message. Now if you want to have all of the back done then you'll need to cut more. I'm only giving you the quantities for the, the way that I've done it. You just have to add more if you want to. Then you want two pieces that are three and three quarters squared and these are going to go in here but you may want to have a long piece here and a short piece here like this short one. You don't have to have it as a square like that so you can change the way it looks as well. Two pieces of that. Then you want six pieces that are one and three quarters by five and three quarters and they are going to go here and here these two here and these two in here okay then you want two pieces but you may want four which are one and three quarters by three and three quarters and these are going on the side of these ones but like I said you may want to have them like that and then another long one there rather than the square that I've done so once you start to do this part and decide how you want it, because I wanted two nice big square areas to have those sentiments, but you may be decorating yours very differently. And then you need all these little pieces here, which are going to be to mat this one, this one and this one. So three there, three there, three there and three there. So you need 12 in total. And these measure three quarters of an inch by one and three quarters. So like I said, I'll go through the layers after, but now I'm going to pop it on high speed and I'm going to get all of these stuck down. Okay, so there's all my mats laid down. I think it's once you start laying them down, you really get to appreciate all the different kind of sections and folds on the card. One thing I realised is that I didn't cut any for this piece here. So this size of these ones, you'd need four. Four, get my fingers right. <laughs> yeah, of that size, because that will go on there and I'll add that in later on. But now, how cool does that look? So next, you want to add all of your layers down. So I've already gone ahead and prepared them all. Now it's basically I've just dropped down by a quarter inch increment on all of the sizes that I gave you there. So let me just grab my scoreboard again to give you the measurements. So for these big squares here you want two pieces that are three and a half by three and a half and they're going to go in there. Then I've got four in this pattern but six all together because I've got two in that pattern there and these are to mat on all of these panels here. So again, total you need six, that are one and a half by five and a half. So you've got one there, 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 and then for the reverse of these here, because this is the front. Then I've got this piece to go right in the middle there, and this is three and a half by five and a half. Again, if you want to do more on the back, you can. And then I've got these, which are going to go in there, but you also need them for the front, so you need four pieces, and they're one and a half by three and a half. Okay, and then again, you want 12 pieces of these tiny ones, which are half an inch by one and a half. And they are going to sit over the top of all of these little pieces here. So now I'm going to go and get them all stuck down. Okay, so now there's the front and then all of the inside. Doesn't that look fantastic? This is, well, it is a wow card, but how great would that look with a, you know, big number 60, 50, 21, whatever, it would look great. Even a really cool wedding card as well. There's just so many great ideas for this. So that's the card done. So now you can obviously stamp and decorate even more. And then I want to show you the belly band and the envelope. So for the belly band, this was 12 inch piece of scrap. So I'm just going to keep it nice and straight with my grid, pop this down just so you've got roughly the same amount overhanging and then you just want to lightly wrap it, okay? This is a thicker card so it's probably, yeah, not the best. It shouldn't crack, it's still okay because it's quite, it's actually very good quality. So now you can see it just comes to here. So whatever you have, you want it to be able to join. So this oval 
meets this either side so it will will be able to form a band so it will all join together. So all I'm going to do is pop a very thin little strip. Actually now I know I can take that away. I'm not going to really burnish it at this point because you what I would suggest is that you just pull it back from itself a little bit. You just want to make sure you have got room to pull it on and off. So I'm actually just pushing it back a little bit so it's not, you know, so it's just that little bit bigger. Because I've got to still add decoration to mine, so I don't want to get to that point and find my belly band doesn't work. So I'm just going to pop a thin strip of glue on each, right on the very ends there. And then just stick my oval down on the top, like so. I'm going to make sure none of the glue's spread out underneath. No, it's okay. Hold that down for a second. Okay, so while that's just drying, you can see now how that's going to look. So, yeah, happy with that. Next, I'll show you quickly the envelope. So I've got a piece of the card from the paper pack. I mean, ideally, you would want something a bit lighter, but it does work with this card stock. Now I'm making the envelope the biggest it can be, which is six by eight and a half. So it's the 11 and a half by 11 and a half paper size that you need, which I'd already gone and cut. And it's telling me that the first score line is four and seven eighths of an inch. I will link the punch board if none of you have seen this before or don't have one, because they are very handy to have. So I'm just lining it up here with four and seven eighths. And I'm just gonna punch and score. Now don't worry that it doesn't score all the way down. Then I like to rotate mine all the way around. So now what I've just punched is at the bottom and line it back up again with four and seven eighths. I just find I get a much nicer finish when I do it this way. And again, score. Now all you want to do is rotate it onto the sides that you haven't worked on yet and pull it in until this piece here sits perfectly along this score line. See now it runs nicely so I can just score and punch. Okay, and then again now I'm gonna rotate it all the way around to this side because I haven't done anything on it yet and just slide it along until this meets that score line, like so, and punch. That way it doesn't matter if you can't score right the way off. So now I've done all of that, get rid of the excess, and then you just want to carefully fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, then I'm gonna bring over my card. That should have dried nicely now. So I'm going to pop this, oh, once it's been in the belly band, it will start to kind of settle. So just pop that in there. It won't be so springy, like so. Okay, how cool does that look? Now put it in the envelope and grab some tape. So I'm gonna use some double-sided tape and you wanna run your tape along the bottom of these two here. You don't have to have the card in actually at this point. You just want to run the glue, the tape, sorry, along the bottom. Okay, take the backing off. Make sure again they're on the bottom. Pop your card in. You've got a nice amount of space in this, so if it does get bulky or if you've got any decoration you want to add on here, you have got a bit of room to the left and the right. It's pretty much there with regards to the height. Bring in the sides and then stick the base down because it will now just stick around the bulk of the end of the card that's in there, like so. So now when I remove that, you can see it's quite springy. It's already now the size that you need it to be for that. If you were to just stick it down without the card inside, you probably wouldn't be able to get that in. And now you can just bring over the top. Again, it will stick. If you run your tape all along these two sides and then that will stick right down but that way you get a much nicer finish. That is a bit bulky, We're probably in the UK that would be a large letter. So it just cost you a little bit more in postage. And then on the front, I just decorated my envelope with a white piece um, that I die cut with one of my decorative rectangles. And then this I fussy cut from the paper pack from me to you, which I thought was really cute. And again, you can see it's, it's already got that kind of space in there to hold that card. So there you go, that is my double display card and I absolutely love this. I love the mirrored card stop but I wanted to show you how it, just as nice it looks without that, you don't need to have all that shine and not everybody likes that so that's why I thought I'd make the two 
but again if you want to just get ideas for decoration it's pretty simple to be honest I've only added this this and this but there's obviously lots more you can do with it and I do have some pieces that I fussy cut from the paper pad that I may well add to this in due course but for the minute it will sit with my others until the day comes that uh, yeah somebody needs this card because I can still personalize this and um, this belly band I made just that little bit tight which I probably will, I think the more I put it on it'll be fine, but yeah, how lovely do they look? There you go guys, that is project number 14 of this year's Creative Card Series 2019. I've absolutely loved it. Thank you for all the comments, all the likes, all the shares, it's all appreciated. And yeah, I'm gonna slow down now on the cards. I do, I will still be posting cards, don't worry, but um, it'll be back to normal tutorials next week and probably a little bit calmer as well just because I've got other things going on as well so yeah I hope you've enjoyed it please leave comments below if you've liked this one please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can watch all of this year's creative card series and see next year's and all my other projects that I've got to come so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all again soon bye